I'm Ruth Werner, and this is a short video sidebar to Mycoses Abounding. This is my pathology perspectives column in the July-August 2019 edition of Massage and Bodywork magazine. One of the things I love about teaching about fungal infections is the vocabulary. There are a lot of long, complicated words connected to this topic, but if you take them apart, they make all kinds of sense. All you need is a little bit of Greek, a little bit of Latin, and there you go. In the process of putting this together, I learned that the suffix osis, which means condition of, is common to both Greek and Latin usages. With that in mind, we can see that mycosis means any fungus condition, internal or external. Myco comes from the Greek for fungus. If you study mushrooms, by the way, you are a mycologist. Dermatophytosis is a fancy word that is sometimes used to talk about fungal infections of the skin. Take this apart and you see some Latin roots, derma, skin, plus phyto, which means plant, although, as we know, fungi aren't really plants, and osis, which means condition. So skin, plant, condition. Easy. Early scientists who first isolated this fungus decided that it looks like a device that sprinkles holy water called an aspergillum. A person who is infected with this fungus has aspergillosis, or condition of holy water sprinklers. Candida, which is a group name for fungi that live in the GI tract and elsewhere, comes from a word root that means white. Evidently, it is the same derivation of the word candid, which could mean clearly visible. Candida albicans is the most common form of candida, and since albicans also means white, this term could translate into white whiteness. And in the article, we talk about candidemia. Emia means blood, so candidemia means having candida in the bloodstream. Tinea is another Latin term. It means worm. This is because we used to think that this looked like a worm burrowing under the skin. I cannot tell you how very relieved I was when I learned that in fact there are no worms in ringworm. Body ringworm might be called tinea corporis. Your corpor is your body. Think about that in the context of words like corpse or corporate or incorporation. Tinea capitis is easy. Capitis is head, so this is a ringworm of the scalp. By the way, one of the species that grows here and on other parts of the body fluoresces under black lights, just like some species of mushroom. Tinea pettis, pettis is foot, of course, is a fancy term for athlete's foot. Here's a fun factoid. Athlete's foot had never been seen in the United States until just after World War I. We think that soldiers returning from the war brought it back with them, and now it is one of the most common skin infections in this country. Tinea cruris, cruris means crotch, so this is jock itch. I won't show you a picture of this one, but do be aware that while it affects the scrotum and gluteal cleft, it can also spread to the thighs, the buttocks, and the sacral area, which puts it in range of massage therapy, so that is something we want to keep in mind. Onyko is the Greek word root for nail, as in a fingernail or a toenail. So onychomycosis is a fungal infection of a nail, but wait, the Latin for nail is unguous, so another way to talk about nail fungus is tinea unguum. Which one would you rather have, a nicomycosis or tinea unguum? Well, sometimes a word can seem quite humongous. It's built from small pieces, just like a fungus. In this way, a simple my case of mycosis could be classified further as dermatophytosis, that is, fungal diseases found on the skin that look like a worm could be burrowing in. A fungus can be a mold or a yeast. On keratin, it makes a delicious feast, and when at last it's had its full, the skin behind is pale and dull. 
These skin infections can be scary. A good MT is likely wary. But when these parasites get inside, that's when we might want to run and hide. The Centers for Disease Control's list of infections, fungal, can make us feel we spend our lives inside a fungal jungle. Blastomycosis and sporotrichosis. I'm glad we can't get these things via osmosis. Yeast growths inside the mouth are thrush and they cause halitosis. But fungus in the lungs can be a case of aspergillosis. And if that makes a fungus ball, what's the correct protocol? A couple of types of cryptococcus can cause hemodysis. Coughing up blood, I'm sure you'll agree, qualifies as a crisis. Valley fever causes night sweats. Trichophyton is spread from our pets. It's hard to get rid of Candida auris when it can grow in places that aren't even porous. These cooties prey on those who struggle to maintain immunity. If someone's sick with something else, they strike with impunity. So to be safe, healthcare workers, we must be familiar with these lurkers and use all available current science to bring best practices to our clients.